So in this video, we'll discuss acute combined degeneration of the cord. So what's combined degeneration? Combined degeneration is when both sensory and motor systems are affected and is due to deficiency of vitamin B12. And what's the most common cause of vitamin B12 deficiency? Most common cause is pernicious anemia where there are antibodies against the parietal cell of the stomach. That leads to achlorhydria and uh, atrophic gastritis. So where is vitamin B12? absorbed in the intestine it's in absorbed from the terminal ileum so the disorder that also affects the absorption they may cause vitamin b12 deficiency and they include Crohn's disease celiac disease and malabsorption syndrome on any other tumor affecting that area Cobalamin deficiency leads to decreased methylation of critical histidine residue in myelin basic protein and also leads to decreased production of phosphatidylcholine, both of which cause demyelinated. Whitish demyelinated areas are found mainly in the posterior columns and in the lateral corticospinal tract. So a disorder that affects the myelin sheath affects the white of the spinal cord and it spares the H-shaped gray zone of the gray matter. The B12 deficiency mainly affects the posterior column or posterior spinal thalamic tract and the lateral corticospinal tract, also spinal thalamic tract. Posterior column and lateral corticospinal tract. This one is ascending and lateral corticospinal tract is a descending tract. But both of them run ipsilaterally. Posterior column runs ipsilaterally up to the medulla fasciculus cuneatus from the upper body and the fasciculus gracilis from the lower body. And there the decussarian nucleus cuneatus and nucleus gracilis and cross over to the opposite side. So a lesion in the posterior column will affect ips ipsilateral lateral corticospinal tract, cross over in the medulla and form pyramid and there they decussate and cross over to the opposite side. So any lesion below this level produces ipsilateral lesion, whereas the anterior corticospinal tract do not decussate in the medulla. They go ipsilaterally and then they cross over in the spinal cord. Then they supply muscles on the opposite side. The arrangement of these different tracts is important because in the lateral corticospinal tract, the sacral region is represented laterally and the cortical is medially. So a lesion lateral to this lateral corticospinal tract which is progressing medially towards the sacral part will more um, lateral part of the lateral corticospinal tract will affect more to the sacral region even if the lesion is in the neck. Whereas the arrangement in the posterior columns is such that the sacral fibers are medially and cervical fibers are arranged laterally. So a lesion in the posterior column will produce defects in sense of position, pressure and vibration and also the fine touch will be affected on the same side of the body. And a lesion in the descending lateral corticospinal tract will produce defects on the same side of the body, upper motor neuron type of lesion, that is spastic paresis and hyperreflexia. Whereas a lesion in the lateral spinal thalamic tract, they cross over to the opposite side in the spinal cord, where they enter in the spinal cord or a few segments a little above where they enter the spinal cord. So a lesion in the lateral spinal thalamic tract, which carry pain and temperature, will produce defects on the opposite side of the body. So the vitamin B12 deficiency causes diffuse myelopathy, which is symmetric, and there is a predominant involvement of the posterior columns and lateral corticospinal tract. There is a positive Romberg sign and a positive Babinski sign. There are paresthesias in the hands and feet, and loss of vibration and position sensations and a progressive spastic and a toxic weakness and loss of reflexes due to peripheral neuropathy. Optic atrophy and other mental changes may be present in advanced cases. So what is a positive Romberg sign? Romberg sign is positive when the patient is standing, closes his eyes, he loses his balance. But if he loses his balance with open eye, it is due to the defect in cerebellum. The Romberg test is positive 
in these sensory conditions such as vitamin B12 deficiency, Davies tarsalis or neurosyphilis, conditions such as chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyradicular neuropathy affecting the sensory nerves. So the features of B12 deficiency are peripheral neuropathy with sensory loss and depressed tendon reflexes. And in the spinal cord syndrome or myelopathy, the affects the posterior column with loss of position, vibration, proprioception and pressure sensation. With the involvement of lateral cortical spinal tract, hyperactive tendon reflexes and a Babinski sign and a spasticity and damage to the cerebrum myelinated fiber may also cause dementia. Diagnosis of B12 deficiency simplest and easiest test to diagnose B12 deficiency is measuring serum B12. There is macrocytic red blood cells and also there are elevated serum levels of homocysteine and methyl melanoic acid. Schilling test is done to evaluate the absorption of vitamin B12 in the GIT. It's done in two parts. First, a radio labeled oral B12 is given and then two hours later intramuscular vitamin B12 given. That displaces radio label B12 and that is measured in the urine. Nerve conduction studies any condition that causes demyelination they affect the nerve conduction. Causes of demyelination are jar genetics, autoimmune, infection, organophosphates, and deficiency disorders like B12 deficiency. In acute B12 deficiency, there are axonal damage, and in chronic B12 deficiency, there are demyelination with low amplitude and slow conduction velocity.